Good day. My name is Sunette Steinberg and I will be your presenter on maximizing research impact. Author citation analysis. The topic of maximizing your research impact is quite an extensive one. I will therefore address the following subtopics under it in a series of presentations. In the first presentation, I looked at a number of author profiles, their benefit and how to create them. In the second presentation, I showed how to select a highly ranked accredited journal to publish in. In this presentation, we will cover an individual author citation analysis which you can then apply to your own research output to determine your research footprint. This will also include altmetrics. In the last presentation, we will identify international authors to co-author with, which will definitely increase your research visibility. This then is the third presentation of four. It will cover author citation analysis in Web of Science, Scopus and Google Scholar. The purpose for you is to be able to create your own citation analysis in order to submit for NRF ranking, grant applications and promotion. This is the library homepage. From here, we will navigate to all resources. You can find both Web of Science and Scopus under databases in an alphabetical list. Let's start with the Web of Science, the older of the databases, by selecting W from the alphabetical list and then Web of Science Core Collection from the list of journals that appeared. On the opening page of the Web of Science, the default is the basic search. There is more than one way of doing an author citation analysis. I'm going to demonstrate the one that was designed for this function. Start by clicking on author search at the top, then submit your surname and first initial. One could submit your initials or names in full, but might not pick up those documents where your name was abbreviated. So I prefer to stick with the first initial. If the results are too many, then you might want to fill in more initials or the name written out in full. There were nine results that matched the search criteria of B. Wingfield. The researcher I am investigating is Brenda D. Wingfield. Both results one and two belong to her. You will see that the addresses are slightly different and therefore the different profiles. Under normal circumstances, there would only be one result per person. Let's see what happens when we look at a profile under the two profiles separately, starting with the top one. The most important information for us on this slide are the number of publications, 416 in this case. Secondly, the number of times that these publications were cited by other researchers in their articles. And thirdly, her H index, which I will explain in the next slide. Now, the H index was suggested by George Hirsch in 2005. The definition from Nature describes the H index as the highest number of papers a scientist has that have at least that number of citations. In order to explain the H index better, I have created an imaginary list of publications by researcher A. The articles are sorted according to their citations. When I repeat the definition now, it might make more sense. 
The H index is the highest number of papers that have at least that number of citations or more. In this case, it would be four because four articles have at least four citations or more. So even though a young researcher received 20 citations to his first and only paper, his age index would only be one. If the same person published two articles and the one had 20 citations and the second one, his age index would still be one because the second article need at least two citations before his age index can move to two. I hope this is clear. Therefore, a young researcher that have published only one article can never have an age index of more than one. If we have another look at Professor Wingfield's profile, you will understand that this is an exceptionally good age index. For her to reach an age index of 51, she needed to publish at least 51 papers that were each cited at least 51 times or more. In the second profile, only 32 of Professor Wingfield's articles were linked, which retrieved 42 citations and an H index of two. This means that only two of these articles received two or more citations. At this stage, I need to mention that these articles will be different from the ones in the first profile. In order to get a complete picture of Professor Wingfield's academic output, one have to combine the two profiles in order to get the correct results for her. Do this by selecting the records and then click on View Combined Record at the top right. Because the age index and citations in the second profile was not very high, it did not make any difference to her total age index. She still has 51 articles with 51 citations or more, but her publication count is now 448 instead of 416, and the citation count is 10,686 um, instead of 10,664. In order to get a full citation report that can be presented with your NRF rating, funding or promotion application, click where the arrow indicates at the bottom of the page. At the top of the report, you will find a summary of the most important information for the citation analysis. Below this is a graph that indicates the number of citations received per year, and then a complete list of all your articles in order of citations received. The second platform where we are going to find author citation analysis is Scopus. The default to search when landing on Scopus is documents. In order to do an author citation analysis, click on authors at the top. Then submit your surname and first initial. There is the option to submit your affiliation as well. I prefer not to do that, especially if you had other affiliations than the University of Pretoria before. You also have the option to search according to your ORCID, providing your ORCID is linked to all your publications. Otherwise, 
Let's stick to just the surname and first initial and search. There are 19 author results for B. Wingfield. Only the first result belongs to Professor Brenda Wingfield. Click on the name, not the box next to the number to see her profile. From her profile, you can see her author profiles at the top of the page, all the name variants where she published by, and then her subject areas. At the bottom of the slide, you can see the number of documents authored by her, the number of citations her publications received in total, and her age index. You will notice that her age index is 52 on um, Scopus, while it was 51 on Web of Science. This happens in a lot of cases. The reason is that the Web of Science indexes much fewer documents than Scopus. The Web of Science claims to be more prestigious and only index the highest quality of journals, while Scopus try to be more inclusive but still only include quality journals. If one scroll down on the profile page, you also see a graph showing the number of documents and citations per year. Below that is the complete list of journals by this author in order of date. If you like, you could also sort these by citations, similar to the Web of Science, where the arrow indicates. I already showed you how to create a Google Scholar profile in the first presentation of this series, but we'll quickly repeat the steps. Google Scholar is easily accessible to everybody. Access Google Scholar at the second URL on the slide. Select My Profile and follow the steps to link your publications from Google Scholar to your profile. This then is Professor Wingfield's profile. Here, yeah, 582 of her publications is recorded. They received 16,000, almost 600 citations, and she has an age index of 66. This sounds fantastic if you would compare it with the Web of Science and Scopus. The reason for the high numbers is that Google Scholar retrieves everything harvested by Google Scholar, such as research papers, books, conference proceedings, and institutional repositories like UP Space. It has no filters and no referees. It is important to always mention where your citation analysis originated from. The indexes Web of Science and Scopus are more prestigious than Google Scholar. The humanities and social sciences might not have another option than to make use of Google Scholar citations, as their documents are not that well represented within Web of Science and Scopus. Age indexes from different subject fields cannot be compared, as the citing habits varies from subject field to subject field. Include all three author analyses in applications if possible. The H index benefits people with a longer publication history. Especially younger researchers are advised to include alt metrics to overcome the flaws of the H index. Alt metrics will be discussed in the following slides. In order to understand alt metrics, we need to give a step back and first discuss bibliometrics. Now, bibliometrics is the statistical analysis of published research output. 
as was indicated in Web of Science and Scopus. The citations show the impact that a publication had on the scholarly community. Altmetrics measures the activity in online tools and environments in views and downloads. This shows the quantity of interest in a piece of work. This is not an Altmetrics workshop, so I will just touch on the tools in order to explain better. Currently, there are two main tools, namely Plumex and Altmetric. On this slide, you can see what is harvested by each of them to make up the numbers. The University of Pretoria does not have a subscription to either of these tools, but Scopus gives us access to PlumX at the article level. As an example, I search for this article by three of UP's researchers. The article was published in June this year, 2020. So far, it was cited once, which is quite soon after publication, but let us have a look at the alt metrics by PlumX by clicking on View All Metrics at the top. Scroll right to the bottom of the page to see this summary. On the left, one can see the single citation. In the middle, the number of times this article was captured on Mendeley. And on the right hand side, the number of shares, likes, comments and tweets. Professor Terras did a study on the impact of social media on the dissemination of research. She had one research project that resulted in four publications. She shared three of them on social media and ignored the fourth. She had 297, 290 and 142 downloads for these three articles that were shared on social media and only 12 downloads for the article that was not shared on social media. To conclude, bibliometrics in the form of citations are important, but in order to increase them, visibility on social media will be of great help. I thank you.